What up, everybody? This is your boy Theo Pence here. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube so you don't miss any Run Your Race content. What up, everybody? This is your boy Theo Pence here with another episode of Run Your Race with my boy AJ Richardson, who is not here, who is handling business, but he is still getting fined. But people, we have an NBA bet. I mean, he is been through the ringer. I'm just telling you that right now. He has done it all. I mean, 16 seasons? 16 seasons. I mean, South Pole. I'm going to tell you that right now. I've always dreamed to be a South Pole. Jumper crazy. Worked out with him this summer. <laughs> Outshot him, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just flat. I'm just flat. But people, we got a very special guest here today. My guy, CJ Miles. Here. What's up, brother? Nothing much, brother. Nothing much, much. Hey, listen, I appreciate you coming on. Yeah, man. I appreciate you reaching I appreciate out. you coming yeah. on. And it's 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 really an honor to have you on Run Your Race. Um, I think this is just another step for us in this pod, just because this is another we haven't really had this. Somebody who's had this many years in uh of service and playing in the league and just your your story and your path is completely different from everybody else's. You know what I'm saying? And we're gonna get into all of that. And as we as everyone knows and, and whoever watches this for the first time, what we do here is pretty much we talk about from the beginning to where you are today. We wanna start from high school, how'd you start playing, how'd you um get to love of the game and get to uh all that recruitment and get into the league and learning your way through to get to 16 seasons. And we're going to get into all that. So let's go and get started, man. CJ, where you from? Uh, when did you start playing basketball? And when? Did, and just start us off there. Yeah, you know, we at the crib. I'm from Dallas. We at the crib. I'm from, I'm from South East. I'm from Pleasant Grove. Mm -hmm. um, Basketball-wise, everybody just played, man. Like, I, since my dad said he put a football and a basketball in my crib and I threw the football out. <laughs> That's the thing he liked to say, right? Um, but, like, when I mean everybody, like, I used to go – I used to go with my parents to the park and watch my mom and dad play pickup really? at the park, like with me and my mm -hmm. mom and my aunt Yvette, God rest her soul, she passed away, mm -hmm. and her husband at the time, and they would get one more and I would watch them play fives. That was like my introduction to like competition, watching yeah. people like hoop. Yeah. Like, and from there on, like, it was just, that's what we did. Everybody, every family reunion, every time we got a chance to get to a park, we was there. Hooping. Shoes and shorts in the trunk, everywhere. <laughs> Ready to that's, go. That's just how it was. Um, went to Skyline High School here in Dallas. Like, mm -hmm. I'm skipping a little bit, but we get to, uh, went to Skyline, the great uh, J.D. Mayo. Uh, same coach that coached Larry Johnson, Grandma Ma. Okay. Went to my high school also. Um, and, I mean, just, this city was. Your pops hoop? He was so, he was primarily football. Okay. But um, he loved a hoop. That's mm -hmm. all I saw him do. Uh -huh. Like. Preacher's kid grew up in the church, right? I saw my dad catch an alley oop in his suit. <laughs> not, a, not, not, not an exaggeration. Yeah, Dunk that's back wild. Ones. One of the most athletic people I ever saw. And then, um, like, that was just, like, who I watched. Because we had a bunch of athletes in our church, too. So we had a yeah. couple guys go D1 playing football and basketball. Mm -hmm. My uncle went to UTSA. I had a, another cousin that went to University of Arkansas as a safety, ended up playing in the league for a long time. Mm -hmm. So we had a bunch of athletes, we had a bunch of things. Mm -hmm. There was always competition, always that push, right? And then seeing that early, seeing people be successful with it early, was e it made it normal for me. Like, yeah. it was never no thought that I couldn't go play for sure. any for sure. type of, for sure. get to college, go to, yeah. you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that was big for me. For um, sure. Well, there, there was no other sport. Baseball never. up until right before high school. I got my first recruitment letter for baseball. Really? Mm -hmm. Really? Baseball hey, just didn't win. That's so dope because we we doing this, you hear that all the time. It's like uh everybody makes that decision mm -hmm. right when you get to high school. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like you really gotta you really gotta pick one. Mm -hmm. You really gotta make that decision. What why why was it? Is it just because the whole fam played basketball or was it I just you were just better? I didn't than wake one? up and want to play baseball. Really? That was my decision, right? That's how I that's how I, I know that sounds like uh, eighth grader don't really make that type of thought yeah. process, but that's yeah. what it was. I didn't, mm -hmm. on the weekends, I didn't roll over and pick up my glove. Mm -hmm. I picked up a basketball every chance I could. Mm -hmm. And then me and my dad had a conversation one time. He's like, what you want to do with this? I said, I want to do everything I can. And mm -hmm. from that day, he was like, all right, when I tell mm -hmm. you to do something, 
don't ask me why. So when I was balling them newspapers on Sunday morning, yeah, I didn't have to ask. I didn't ask no question. That's a fact. That's a fact. I mean, it's it's it makes it a lot easier, as you mentioned, when you have when you're surrounded by people mm -hmm. striving to get to mm -hmm. the next level. You see that you be like, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. Like not even trying to be exactly who they are, but you just like I want to be as successful as them, and they mm -hmm. having a good time playing the game that I love. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So that's dope. What is uh what's something that um drove you to go to uh, Skyline? You said so my mom. <laughs> really? Uh, so I lived. I was supposed to go to Brian Adams. Kenya Martin went to Brian Adams. Yeah. I was supposed to go to that school at that time. No disrespect, but it wasn't the best place for me to go. Uh -huh. I didn't even know about Skyline. At that time, I was living close to Brown Adams. It was across the bridge, we say, like mm. across the highway, across 30. Mm. And we played a middle school game there. Yeah. And that was the first time I saw the school. Yeah. So Skyline's the first magnet school in the United States. Mm. The first, like, with clusters, college prep, all that, the first big one. Like, it was yeah. supposed to be Eastfield Community College. Yeah. We go over there, we leave. My mom was like, two, three weeks later, she come home with an application. I had to fill out an application to get into school because I didn't live in the, um, yeah. so yeah, she was like, this is better for you. Mm. Cause she was like, you know, mom, they don't, they don't worry about the basketball. She worried about the, the other school. side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I get there and that's how I get into architecture and music and all the other things that I got into. Mm -hmm. That's dope. What is, what, what is like, when was the moment? Because there's always that moment for, especially guys that get to this level. There's always that time especially in high school or middle school and maybe a, a little bit earlier, where you're like, I'm not good. I hmm. can really do this at a high level. What, do you remember that time or, um, or did it happen later? It, for me, it happened later in high school. Like I knew the separation was coming. I, I saw it happening. Yeah. Cause like you just start, people start asking you to go play here. You hmm. changing jerseys in the car, you know, all these different teams and all these things happening. And then, but for me, it was this one time I get, right before I grow, the best team I wanted to play on, we go and they they tell me that they tell me I'm 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 chub, I'm a chubby kid in middle school. Yeah, they tell me that I'm not gonna be able to play. They tell me this is pretty much the end of the road for this because they think I'm gonna get, they think I'm gonna be chubby. They think I'm gonna be a fat kid, oh, wow. right? This is between six and seven grade, so yeah. I'm like five, whatever. I mm -hmm. walk into high school six two, mm -hmm. and the phone start ringing again, obviously, right? <laughs> so, but that's another whatever. Oh, now you. But then I get again. to my so my high school coach was very big on getting the seniors scholarship. Okay. Right? That's that's he took pride in that because where we at, a lot of kids don't get out. A lot of yeah. situations is not great. He mm. trying to get, he trying to make men. He was mm. very much different. He was like a college coach in high school. For sure. So I get there, don't he, he don't put me on varsity, don't do all that. So like the separation kind of slows down. Sophomore year I play varsity. I'm the young boy. Then my junior year, we start that junior year and we go play in one of the biggest tournaments in Texas, the Lone Star. And we leave out of there. And I'm like, all right. Yeah. That was when I left. I think I averaged like 30 something in the tournament. We playing against everybody. Like Matter oh, yeah. Day came. Mm -hmm. It was a bunch. And I started seeing these names I had been hearing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. Cause I didn't play the AAU circuit yet. That's what I was gonna ask you yeah. next. So I didn't play the AAU circuit until after my junior year. I played it one summer. Really? Yeah. My dad was like, we're gonna be in the gym. That's interesting. We was in the gym. That's so very like I was, I was in the gym. So when I got to the AAU circuit, I was polished. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah, I was yeah. work. I, I wouldn't say I was working out how he work out with T like that, yeah, but yeah. I was just working on my game though. Like yeah. I was just, I had an understanding. For and sure. I go into that summer on Team Texas playing point guard. That's what a lot of people, like my, my game in the league is different than what, cause yeah, that's necessity. But like, sure. you ask anybody about me in high school, one of the first thing they tell you is I passed the hell out the ball. Yeah. That's what I did at that mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. So I, go, I show up unranked to Boo Williams. I leave top 20. And then after that, Everything started Everything, flowing. everything fell into play. And it gave me confidence. I'm like, I want to play against Jer. I want to play against Lou Will. I yeah. want to play against Mike Merz. I want now I'm seeing yeah. all these guys that uh -huh. I've been hearing about. Mm -hmm. And it's so bro. I think that is you gotta you gotta let me know. Cause I'm I'm interested <laughs> myself. How how does that work? How does that feel like did, so did you not hear about the circuit at all? So yes and no. Remember the internet is is not this. It's really yeah, we don't. I right. don't. We all you're we right. got is MySpace. Yeah, yeah. Or you're if right. it's MySpace, I man, we don't have any high school. And it's not no like, highlight. You got tapes. one computer in the house. Yeah. I got a cell phone that don't got nothing but like 
Pac-Man on it. Like, mm -hmm. right? There's none of this. Yeah. I'm before the, it sounds crazy to say that, I'm before the social media real blow up. Yeah. So like, we don't even got highlight. Like, I think the highlight tapes is even like very scarce. Like, yeah, it ain't, it ain't sure. even none of this, right? It's, mm -hmm. I don't have one of those. Yeah. Like, you see everybody go talk about all them. I don't have one of those. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to find one yeah. of me. <laughs> like, I don't, I'm before that, right? Yeah. So... It's just happening. Yeah. I'm literally just hooping and I get to be a kid though. Mm -hmm. That's the thing I think that's I underrated. That's underrated. Super I don't get underrated. to have I don't have to worry about the rankings. The, I know there's rankings, but it's not on me all the time. And you I don't leave a tournament and my phone buzz and I'm reading the article about myself. Like it's not happening. I'm mm -hmm. just hooping and we talk about, hey, you need to work on your uh, pull up going right. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And we go work on it. Like it ain't a thousand people writing stuff about me and crushing my soul. Yeah. It's me, my coaches, my dad, my mom being like, hey, you was terrible on defense today. We going to That's tough. You know what I mean? Like this is what's happening. Like mm -hmm. it's just us. And I get to show up polished because of that. That's a different, that's a different, different way of looking at it for sure. Because uh the people I'm, I love is who telling me this, not some random exactly. that's out to just exactly. crush me because they want to be the person that break the names. And you know, it's so hard to do that now. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's very, I don't think it's like, it's possible, but I think as far as the media age now, the kids, they would see it so much. They'd be like, but dad, why I, can't I? I do one better for you. I had no idea the NBA teams was coming to my game when I was in high school. My high school coach and my dad knew. They did not tell me. Mm -hmm. They let me go through that whole like they That's was like, perfect, though. "You're gonna be no." I, I I'm so appreciative, mm -hmm. right? I picked the school, signed with Texas, had a prime because I wanted to play my senior year with no nothing. I wanted mm -hmm. to just already know everything was set. Mm -hmm. We get to the end of the year mm -hmm. and like, hey, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> here's the options, right? And that's when that starts. So I start wow. doing workouts with team at the end of my senior year. That's crazy. And I get guaranteed by three teams. We're going to get there. We're okay. going to get there. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Bro, I, the fact that, that just that just changes everything. That just changes everything. <laughs> because I'm sitting here like, what if I just did that? What if I just sat there and just worked on my game until my sophomore, junior year? You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, you really don't got that much. I was always gone, always gone. Every weekend, I either had a tournament or camp. Mm -hmm. I had no time to be a kid. I had no time doing anything. But at the same time, I'm grateful of that because what would I have drawn myself to? That too, right? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, like, it's, it's definitely- And my parents, no, no way, shape and form, my parents would have let me take the wrong route. Mm -hmm. Like, we definitely had a lot of discipline in the house. But as far as just like what you just said, all right, let's just go work on your right hand, going right pull up, going left pull up, and like little stuff like that, little nuances, and I'm like, damn. And then, so the other thing about that too, so like I said, I was playing, but it was just local, so I was yeah, never gone. So exactly. like the furthest we was going was Oklahoma, mm -hmm. and we could get back, right? Oh, we yeah, drove and came night, back, yeah. right? So, um, and then when I was also playing, I, we ended up moving across the street from Skyline mm -hmm. when I got in high school, so I could walk to and forth from my school. Oh, you right there. Knew the janitors. Yeah. Let me in the gym, leave the door open, whatever. I was always in there. Weekends, grown, they used to have grown men pickups on Sundays. I was playing in that. Playing with them. So like I was all I was playing, but I just I had access to the gym. I had access, mm. I didn't have to be You didn't I was, have to go travel. Yeah, all I wasn't over all the over the place. Exactly. Um, exactly. And it gave me time to like really just focus on that and still be a kid, right? Mm. And it let me make the decision. Yeah. That was the other thing. So like in high school. Anybody to tell you, I didn't win most athletic. I won most likely to succeed. That's tough. Because they would ask me in high school, like, yeah, we doing? I was like, when I get to where I'm going, I'll be able to do whatever I want. Yeah. I said that for three years in high school. That's tough. <laughs> That's tough. And I got drafted uh -huh. three years later. That is <laughs> wild. So when you're starting your junior year, you playing against all these guys. Your class, what's your, your class 05. is what? 05. So. Who's, who's in that 05 class? The the NBA draft, yeah. Uh, D. Wills, CP3, Andrew Bogus won. Um, Andrew Bynum was that year. Marvin Williams was that year. Um, I mean, Tyler's that year. Hands bro. No, no, no. I'm sure. No, I'm, Tyler saying, Hanzo, I'm sorry. Tyler Hanzo was my high school year. Yes, 
Tyler Rell. Tyler Rell. He's a, I think he's a year older than me. Okay. Yeah, he's okay. an old man. Shout out so, to T. Yeah, shout out to T. <laughs> shout out, shout out to T. Funny story how we met too. We no, talked about that. For too. sure. Well, I'm just trying to figure out like, how does that dynamic work? Because we ain't, we haven't had this. You're getting looked at by NBA teams in high school. Mm. What, what the hell is that? I don't know. Remember I told you, they didn't tell me. So, they didn't tell you to the end didn't tell of your me senior year. I was done playing with my senior year. I did not know a thing. Didn't they know was, nothing about they it. Was at, people was calling and asking for tapes. They were sending the tapes. So I had no idea. You just hooping. Just hooping. But you just thinking about what colleges. Yeah. Because that's all anybody was talking to me about. Talk, yeah, for sure. Everybody, every day. That's why I signed it. That's why I wanted to get it over with. At the yeah. beginning of my scene, I was tired of saying, I don't know. For sure. I was tired of answering that question. I was the same way, bro. I was, yeah. bro, by my, my end of my junior year, going to my senior, I said, I am getting this over yeah. with. Yeah, and it wasn't, it wasn't no more schools coming. I had not every, to talk, but I had every, everybody was there already. Everybody was there. Like, it wasn't like I was waiting on mm -hmm. something. I was like, let's go take a couple visits. Let's make the decision. You yeah, chose Texas? I chose Texas. I wanted to stay at the crib, right? Yeah. Um, I was something about you. that. It was something about that though for me too. Was yeah. doing that for the crib. Yeah. And the basketball was changing. So I'm right after Lamarcus Aldridge, Chris Bosh, uh, mm -hmm. Andre Emmett, like all these Texas blew up right in front of me. Mm -hmm. Uh Bracey Wright. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh D Will. I went to go see D Will Bracey Wright play against Chris Bosch in high school. Mm -hmm. I also I also saw Lamarcus play against Chris Bosch in high school. Um standing room only in them gyms. It was the craziest high school games I've ever been in. It had to be. Had um, to be. They had the Chris Bosch and D. Will Brace right. They played at SMU. They didn't even play in a high school. They had to go to a whole yeah. college. <laughs> they played at the, play the SMU. And still standing room only. Yeah. So that's um, crazy. And it's all this stuff is just popping up around uh, Warren Carter. They went to Illinois. Mm -hmm. um, like all that's happening right in front of me. So I wanted everybody was leaving. Mm -hmm. Lamarcus ended up staying, but like everybody was leaving. I was like, man, we got all this here. TJ4, I had just watched TJ4 have a great yep. career. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, I want to I want to do it for the crib. Yeah. And, and Rick Barnes was straight up with me. He was like, Rob, you ain't going to be here but a year. <laughs> he came and sat in the living room and told me that. He said, you ain't going to be here for the year, so let's just go yeah. ahead and open that pipeline up. Yeah. Right? We'll keep it going. Yeah. At that point, you didn't want to go to Carolina? I did, actually. Ha -ha. So, so, no. I When I got my letter from Carolina, I that was like a badge of honor, right? Yeah. Because that's what you grew up like. Yeah, you, grew up, you see so, that. And Roy was recruiting me at Kansas. And then, then he, he moved yeah. after my sophomore year to Carolina. Yeah. And that's where I thought I was going. Like, I thought that. And then, like, as I got older, it just- Because they wanted an 05. Yeah. They wanted an 05. You would have mm, had a ring. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, I left. Yeah. And yeah. then everybody was mad at me in Austin because they thought they could have won it that year because that was the year LaMarcus, PJ Tucker, <sighs> that had that team, that right? Had and they was like, I was one of the missing pieces for that. AJ Abrams went in that year. To play backup point, Daniel Gibson was yes. there. Yes, like they had that squad, and I went. <laughs> I got sent to the D League my rookie year, and we went to go play at Austin, and they threw stuff at me. Oh <laughs> damn, <laughs> bro, that was so traumatizing because I was eighteen, bro. Yeah, like I was bro. like, bro, I didn't. I was already lost. Yes, right. And we get there, they was calling the, the hotel room the night before. And then the game, they booed me at the game. <laughs> like, they was that mad. They was, they was mad. Jesus. People were still mad. I was like five years in. We played the Spurs and somebody yelled at me, you should have went to Texas. I'm like, bro, <laughs> we so far away from that. Yeah, like, bro, like that is, <laughs> y'all had KD already. I'm 24 already. years old. <laughs> yeah. And that's the other thing they was mad about. KD's only a year behind me. So if I stay two years, <laughs> I play with KD. I ain't gonna hold you, I would've mad at your ass too. <laughs> Hey, Texas fans, I, I, I'm right here with you. He tripping. Y'all yeah. would have had a ring. Yeah. I'm just playing. Hey, listen, he got to the Baja early, though. He would had to go to the league. So let's go ahead and get into it, man. What happened? When you find out these NBA teams are talking to you, well, not even talking to you, mm -hmm. coming to the games, what is that, what, what, what's that next process as a high schooler? Uh, you just go in the workout? In all honesty, bro, I'll tell you all the time, I, I remember, like, the prom and draft night. <laughs> That's how fast it happened, right? It I went to, to I took a break in the stuff, do, doing the stuff to go to prom, obviously. Yeah. But I'm doing the workouts. I do like 13. Yeah. A couple of them is twice. I do the San Antonio twice, I do Denver twice, but I do a bunch, right? Mm -hmm. And this is the last year that they they, they end up doing it too. Yeah. And but I just remember just just being there. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like I wasn't really thinking about where I'm gonna get, I wasn't worried like that. I mm -hmm. was just hooping. Like, mm -hmm. and that's cause that's what had got me that far. So I was trying to trying to stay that way. Yeah. I was just like, it's 
always gonna take care of itself because I love this. Yeah. And I don't do nothing but put work in on it. So mm -hmm. no matter where I, I fall, all I gotta do is get there. Exactly. If I get there, I'm gonna stay. Yeah. Like I'm I never I'm not I ne about Yeah, it. I wasn't I was just like I just gotta get there. Mm -hmm. And then I started to wrap my head around if I get to go to the league now, them two you one year, two years of college, I get to learn there. Yeah. Instead of trying to figure it out in, after them. In college. So that's the way, yes, I could have benefited from school 100%. I tell you all the time, I don't regret mm -hmm. nothing, but I definitely could have benefited from going to school. Mm -hmm. Like my body would have benefited. I was 180 pounds, you know what I mean? And just the maturity level. There's pros and cons of both of them. Yeah. There's pros and cons it's, of it's a lot of things that go into that. Maturity level probably gets to, I get a little bit more um, guidance of not being treated grown right away. Yeah. In school, you still a little bit. For sure. People kind of like, they, when you they, get to the lead, they like, bro, we ain't. Yeah, yeah, mm, they don't, We not holding your hand. I'm like. If, if this check ain't enough, mm -hmm. then <laughs> like, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know you. what to tell you, bro. Yeah, so um, I definitely could benefit from that, but I got two years. Um, Obviously, Jerry Sloan don't like young guys. So mm -hmm. <laughs> that kind of made a little. Yeah. What he, pick you would pick? 34. Pick 34. 34, second round. In the 05 draft. 05 draft. And you do 13 workouts. Talk about draft night. At the crib. Um, all the new stations pulled up. Family mm -hmm. at the crib. We watching on the um on the TV. And obviously, like Where'd you think you were gonna go? So Utah was one of the teams that guaranteed me. Yep. Um, San Antonio was one of the teams that uh, guaranteed me. You just want to stay in Texas. And the other one was like, it was the Clippers, it was between me and the dude they picked who ended up, I don't even remember his name, but he ended up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In and out. Whatever. But um, so the draft goes crazy, right? So Utah got six and 27. Mm -hmm. I'm the 27th. Yeah. I, I know that, yeah. right? They want to pick D-Wheel. Somebody else is going to pick D-Wheel before six. So they trade six and 27 to get three. So that, uh, that goes crazy. Gotcha. Then we get to the Clipper pick. They had like 12 and they picked the European kid they picked. Yeah. The week before the draft, everybody in San Antonio that told me they wanted, they wanted me, they wanted to draft me, they go to Cleveland. Danny Ferry and them go to Cleveland the week before the draft. Oh, so everything goes South. left, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then the first round go by. And I'm sitting there, we on the phone, it's phone call, obviously, you know how it goes, mm -hmm. and phone calls is going, whatever. Utah was there, well, we got 34, we still gonna, mm -hmm. if he's still there, we still gonna pick him. And it was between there and Philly mm -hmm. at that time. I ended up in Utah, we ended up working a the deal, they guaranteed me the two years still. Got you. Because I was gonna be the 27 pick. Exactly. And that was my only thing. If I'm guaranteed, like I said, I'm, I'm, gonna, find, I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna find my way. Like, if I wasn't gonna be guaranteed, I was gonna go to school. Yeah. And I was just gonna have my rights, and then I would at least be ready when I got there, when I had my rights, so I could really make a So form. you could have went? I could have went to school because I didn't sign with an agent. Oh, wow. They would just have my rights. Okay. Because remember, I forget his name, but it was this guy that did it. Like he literally left college and was sitting on the NBA bench like two weeks later because they had his rights. That's wild. I um, did not know that. Yeah, so without signing an agent, I, was, I could go to school. So my thing was, if I, if I was going to end up in a D-League or floating around, I might as well just go to school. Go to school and play. And here. then, come out and they got my rights and they could just sign me now because I'm a, I'm a more polished product again. Yeah. So, but they, they guarantee would you have, me. Would you, let's just hypothetically, mm -hmm. you knew it was the way it was going to be. Would you have went back to college? Or you would just played it out the same way? I don't know. I, no. I wouldn't, went, I, would, I probably wouldn't went to school because if I didn't went to school, I wouldn't have had to deal with that drafting like that. I would have been lotto. Yeah. I know that. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, cause I know how I work and what I, and the team I would have been on, how I would have played. Yeah. I wouldn't have had to deal with a, the way it went. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I can't, you can't play that game. Yeah, right? no, no, but like, no, no, no. It's easy to say that now, but yeah, For I would have sure. went cause they, it would have been, I would have had more control over the situation. Exactly. I would have had leverage. Exactly. I think it was, uh, I want to ask you because I'm, I mean, I got questions just throwing away my head right now. Cause I'm like, <laughs> damn, straight out of high school, what is the workout like? You're 18 going against, like you play grown men, mm -hmm. but these ain't just grown. These are league motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? So, so I tell you, the the, what was the, the prime, the the best way Your I can put it. Your best workout was what? My best workout. Ooh, I had great works in San, obviously in San Antonio and Utah because yeah. they guaranteed yeah, yeah. right. Um, and then me and Monte went at it in Denver. Mm -hmm. Um. 
I had a bunch of good records, but the thing that 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 got me really the buzz I got in it, people didn't realize I shot the ball like I did. Gotcha. Because I was not a shooter. You was the point guard. But yeah, but I but because I was in the gym all the time, yes. I could shoot the leather off the ball. That yeah. just wasn't my game. I was yeah. in, in high school, I didn't have to shoot threes. Yeah. It wasn't like now. Steph hadn't happened yet. Yeah. So yeah. so we didn't play that way. Mm -hmm. Um, but then they saw the potential of that and it really changed mm -hmm. the perception of me. Yeah. But um, so speaking of that, Utah, purposely, they bringing me in. They go get the biggest guys they can get to beat me up in the workout. Cause they, Coach Sloan literally says, he said, I just wanted to see if you was gonna get up. I knew you could play, knew you was talented. We knew all that, but we needed to know if you was gonna get knocked down for an hour, was you gonna get up? These mind games, boy. They told me that. Mm -hmm. And obviously I got up. Yeah. And that's how, and You've that's been what got me this. there. But yeah. Yeah, they, they, and that's the thing, right? I was already groomed for that. I had been getting beat up. Yeah, I was exactly. playing in church leagues at nine and ten yeah. with grown men. And that's I was grown playing man in, strength. Yeah, you know I'm saying yes. I was doing all that the whole time. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even think I didn't even think of it that way when they until they told me. I yeah. was like, I just was dealing with what I've been dealing with. Yeah, this, <laughs> like, ain't, this ain't really nothing yeah. new to me. That's tough. The only thing that was tough was the altitude. Because <laughs> I had never been in it before. Boy, every time I go to Utah, I try to get a good lather. So <laughs> warm up. I tell you this, we used to go, we would go on the road for like a week and come back and it would bother us even if we had been there. It had to be. Bro. Yeah. So this like, it's not crazy. just, yeah. This shit is crazy, bro. I'm like, I, uh, Utah rough. Yeah. Utah is yeah. rough. So shit, rookie year, 18 mm -hmm. years old, CJ Miles, mm -hmm. you go from Texas mm -hmm. to Utah. City. That is a that is a that mm -hmm. is a culture shock. Mm -hmm. If you ever seen one, mm -hmm. for eighteen year old, mm -hmm. because it's not like like you said before. When you go to college, you're on your own a little bit. You get a little bit of a uh, what would you say? Kind of they're not holding your hand, but they're kind of like grooming mm -hmm. you to become mm -hmm. a man, man. Nah, bruh. You're 18 years old. Yeah. You got taxes. Yeah. And think about it, man. <laughs> and think about it like this too. I was gonna be in Austin. I was gonna be able to go home on the weekend still. Come on, bro. <laughs> I was gonna drive home and then my mama get my laundry. You, you had all that. But no, you got a winner. Mm -hmm. You ain't never had a I winner. Never had a winner. Uh first winner. First uh I getting up leaving the crib in my apartment. Never seen black ice a day in my life. I back out of my spot. I'm leaving out of the um apartment building. It's like it got like a little turn to get to the exit gate. Yeah. That back two wheels slide out from under me and I go head into a pole in the parking lot. I don't even get out and look. I just back up and go to practice. <laughs> I get to practice, they like, hey, you, I said, mm. yeah, <laughs> I'm like, what right. am I, you know what I mean? It is what it is, right? Like, um, but yeah, that winter was, that was different. I, Cause I had never seen snow for real. We get ice sometimes, never seen real snow like that. Have you that just sat down and thought about like, that can be one of the hardest things right there. Just, just dealing adjust, with that. Just dealing with that. Mm -hmm. And then you got to deal with the shit on the court. Then you got to deal with a coach who don't even rock with Who rookies. don't even, know, let alone an 18 year old rookie. An 18 year old rookie. We also talking about a time. They don't nobody know what to do with me. They don't know. They don't know what to do with a kid. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like everybody, on the, everybody on the team got kids. Come on bro. They grown men. I ain't, ain't nobody playing no, it ain't video games like that at that time. It ain't none of that, right? Like it's grown men that's trying to get that chicken, that's right? Tough, that's bro. all they care about. They, they taking care of their family, trying to get their paper. Yeah. And they ain't, ain't nobody And they looking time. at you like an 18 year, yeah. like I'm not letting this. Yeah, Matt it, Harper was hell. Yeah, you hell every day. Hell. He the reason I was in the D League the first year. <laughs> he beat the brakes off me in that mid post. It wasn't nothing I could do about that. Hey, listen, bro, that, that is the <laughs> hardest. And I'll tell you this, shout out to Jawar Williams. Uh, he mm. is a, a player development with the Sacramento Kings right now. Dog, mid post, and shout out to Ray Felt. He even did it. Mm. Mid post, we, in the summers, they didn't do nothing else. They just put us in the mid post and was working. I remember this 05. So yeah, this is, bro. This is, this is where we're playing at. This shit. Everything is like 18 feet in. We Come ran on, the bro. flex offense. We ran UCLA. I, that, that makes me want to throw up. <laughs> in in, in Utah. <laughs> we ran UCLA automatics, bro. We did not play. Bro, we had Kyle Culver on our team, and I cannot think of a play we had for a three-point shooter. He curling. 
We curling. Yeah, Everything's curling. 15, 16, 17 feet. <laughs> Everybody in the Everything. paint. Everything. Everybody, bro. There's no space on that No board. spacing. If it, looking back at it. We went in game 68 this <laughs> Hey, bro, looking back at it, it's low-key bad basketball. 100%. And but it, you got Jerry Sloan coaching who only seen the bad, I, I mean, like. It's low-key bad ball. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, God. oh but, my but God. But remember, they, they the three-point shot was not considered was, the you way didn't, You didn't really like, need it, need it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everybody and it wasn't even it. a lot of guys that shot it like that. They had mm -hmm. people that could shoot it, but they wasn't. Like our best shooters at that time was shooting like three threes a game. How long did it take you to play in the game? Like for real? Did you play in the preseason? So <laughs> <laughs> the first preseason game, we yeah. played Toronto. Yeah. Shout out to my man. We played Toronto. Yeah. Uh, shout out to my people in Toronto, which is crazy. But we go up there. We, everybody plays in the first preseason game, right? Yeah. So like the first game, my first two shots, first was an air ball, the second was a rocket off the glass, right? <laughs> Bow, like hit the glass so hard. D. Yep. Will, I remember this like yesterday. D. Will taps me on the shoulder, I'm at the free line. He say, bro, it's basketball. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you right, yeah. <laughs> right? Sure. I go on the second half, I score like 15 in the game. I make a three at the buzzer that's in the game in the overtime. Mm -hmm. The next three games I don't play, <laughs> right? Can't have it. And then I find out one of the reasons Coach Sloan said he didn't play because the next game was Indiana. And that was Ron Artex, Steven Jackson, like it was that Indiana. He yeah. was like, yeah, we was trying not to get you from getting you like your soul crushed. Cause mm -hmm. they was going, that they was going to be a little different they for you. They was going to be at you. They was going, and it was going to be the barking. It was, but I was like, I was groomed for that already. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know that. Yeah. I just see it as, why well, I'm not playing. I just, I should get the build off this. Even if I don't play in the season, I should get to see. What I can And then do. I don't play. Season goes on, don't play. I get sent to Idaho. Yeah. Oh uh, no, no, the Boise yeah. to play in the D League. Um, Go down there. No, I'm sorry. I get sent to Albuquerque. Idaho's my second year. Bro, they had some <laughs> wild ass cities. I got sent to D Albuquerque. Uh, Coop, uh, Mike Cooper's my coach, uh -huh. which is good for me. Yeah. A wing. How many um, teams in the D League at this point? Six, seven, eight, maybe? We played everybody twice. So we went somewhere. We played Wednesday and Saturday. Because it was not enough teams. I mean, yeah. they wouldn't have us traveling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we played everybody twice at that time. Um, I go down there. Spent like a month down there, but I was happy because I got to play. You got like, to hoop. I got to just hoop and came back and kind of like just was around. Yeah. And this is the other thing that's different at that time. There's no player development like that. We just shooting elbow jump shots and doing backdoor cuts to dunk and doing conditioning. Like yeah. it's not, you know what I mean? We're mm -hmm. not looking, breaking the game down. We're not doing what we do now. For it's sure. not like that. For sure. Um, we barely, Coach Sloan hated watching films. <laughs> Cause he would get so mad at the film. He'd be like, yeah. bro, we going downstairs, yeah, <laughs> right? Exactly. And then like, we had to watch film a lot on our own time, some. So like, but even that, I don't know how to break down NBA film like that, right? Yeah, um, that's, that's a different type It's of a different film. type of thing. And I'm not playing, so it's really hard to watch mm -hmm. it like that. And then I don't, then the second year, my second year I come in, I start the first 13 games. I earned that spot in training camp. I start the first 13. Your first? First 13, 14 games. How many years you were Coach Sloan? Six. You was, oh shit. Yeah. So my so so my second year, I start the first 13, 14 games. We start we had the best start in franchise history. Wow. We go like 13 and one or something like that. I got a thing for it. But the thing is, like, he's still not messing with the young guy. I got it. It's a clip that everybody's still talking about in oh, or a newspaper article. I'm sorry, it wasn't uh, a clip shit. Yeah. I can't put a jock strap on in one night and a diaper the next. <laughs> this is on the front page of the paper. Like <laughs> That's what he said. What, what did you do to him, bro? Like, so the first game of the season, we play the Rockets, and I come out, and I score like 12 in the first quarter. Yeah. I have a decent game. We go to Phoenix the next night. Like a young boy, don't know how to take care. I don't know how to. Yeah. I'm learning how to do this. Yeah. Stink it up. Come back, have another good game at home. Yeah. Right? And he's just like, I, I, I can't deal with this. I mean. And he's not wrong to an yeah, extent, right? Because yeah. you got guys on this team that, them. You got older guys that you yeah. feel like they can figure it out faster and they mm -hmm. can. Um, but the thing about, I would say about Coach Sloan though, because I knew he rocked with me. He did to an mm -hmm. extent. He just didn't know what to do with me. Yeah. So like everything he said, once I realized that he was just trying to make me better, everything he said didn't bother me. Yeah. So people were coming to me like, he said, I was like, he said yeah. it. Like, what you want to do? 
It's his opinion. Yeah. yeah. He, he, he's not wrong. Yeah. I don't know how to tell you that, but he's yeah. not wrong. And then my third year, same kind of situation. Cause I'm I'm 19 now. Like, right? <laughs> like I'm not yeah. like, and we go through that year. Gordon Gearcheck and Coach Long get on a get an argument on the road. He sends Gordon Gearcheck home. We on the East Coast swing. What? Sent them home out the locker room. He said, go home. <laughs> Sent them all the way Sent home. home. I go from not playing to playing the backup twos minutes. Not playing at all. Maybe getting like foul triple minutes in the quarters and stuff like that. Yeah. To playing 20, basically 22 minutes a night. 20 minutes a night. And I'm rocking. I'm, 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 yeah. I'm going. Trade Gordon Gear check for Kyle Corver, and I go back to the bench. <laughs> Boy, they just playing with your mental. So now I'm only playing when Andre Karolinko don't play. He so, always played. Yeah. But he would have his nights. Nice, yeah. He would, have, he would have his itis. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody was coming in. Yeah. So like, but this is the thing. I would go from being in a sports coat and then he don't play and I would start. That's so. So I either started or I didn't play. Hey, I'll tell you this. That, that's the ultimate always be ready. Mm -hmm. And it taught me a lot. But at the same time, it's hard to learn how to be consistent when you're young, when everything's inconsistent around you. I'm not. Take making no blame on the stuff I didn't do well either, but I was mm -hmm. a kid. But I'm, mm -hmm. but it's stuff I could have did better. But at the same time, but how are you supposed to know? You don't groom consistency with inconsistent behavior. It's, it's. How are you supposed to know that at a? Because at that point, what you're nineteen? Yeah, you're nineteen. Twenty nineteen, twenty turning twenty that year. You're telling a nineteen year, all right, you're not playing tonight. All right, Andre's not playing tonight, so mm -hmm. you're starting. And it's Kobe. Yeah. <laughs> and it's Melo. And it's Grant Hill. And it's And you're playing probably the hardest position in the league mm -hmm. at this time. Mm -hmm. All the wings. Cause one night, even the guys that we don't talk about, you still had like guys like, oh, Rip Hamilton gave me the blues to the point that they laughed at me. Yeah, what was your welcome to the NBA moment? Crazy. My my welcome to the NBA moment was uh in Portland. It was um uh Luke Jackson. Luke Jackson. Is that his name? Am I saying it right? Left-handed shooter. That's his name, right? I don't so, even know who that is. So this is what happened. We in Portland. Uh -uh. I, don't, I don't play. I'm sitting over there. It's an eight-point game or something like that. Yeah. Three minutes later, it's a 25-point game. And I'm like, oh, step out there me in the game. So they throw me in the game. Yeah. And he already been playing. He's in oh, the yeah, game. He yeah, rolling. Yeah. And they running floppy for him. And he's just running around. And he just saw so it wasn't like getting like cooked, but he's just running around making shots. And yeah. I'm like, bro, I ain't had to chase nobody off a screen like this ever in my life. In my life. And he just running around and he, he, he have a, a run of like the last few minutes, he just scored a bunch of points. And I'm just like. <laughs> I gotta get better. <laughs> yeah, I gotta, something gotta change. Something gotta change. Something gotta change. <laughs> Either I gotta go or, uh, <laughs> or like, we gotta figure something out. Um, what, was the, what was the one game? I know your first game you played pretty well, but what was the one game you were like, okay, I can really, do so the crazy thing is before that, my second year, the last game of the season, my first year, I end the season, I have like a 25 point game. Mm -hmm. Like uh, against Golden State. And Monte, we, I play against Monte. Monte, yeah. we both get, cause it's the end of the year, we both getting minutes. Mm -hmm. They just let us rock. That was the first yeah. one I got to really rock out. And that's what led me go into that summer to earn that spot the next year. Cause I yeah. got to do that. Um, but then my third year, I have a couple games where I have like 30 point games. Gotcha. And I'm like, all right, like, I can do it. It's this not shit. me all the time, <laughs> right? Like, it's not me all the time, right? Yeah. It's, it's just the situation I'm in right yeah, now. Like, sure. if I can get a chance to, to string this together a little bit and- If you can have some consistency, mm -hmm. and then so I, this, can really, I can really take this to a level where- So, so here's go to another part of my story, let me, right? Can I ask you this? Hang on to that. Yeah. What is the, what's the, going back to high school a little bit, what- the, the McDonald's shit. Because you definitely were the mm -hmm. McDonald's. All McDonald's in Georgia. How do you do that? Is it at the same time? Like, because you got to go straight to the league though, right? Nah, it was, it was time. It wasn't, it was, um, but, but there's scouts definitely there. It's before the draft. It is. Because oh, it helped I'm me tripping. in the draft. You're right, you're right. Because I, right. I go there and, but the other thing is that I wasn't saying I was coming out yet. So okay. it, it was also definitely a little biased to guys that said they was coming out. Okay, okay. Because it's showcasing them got too. You. So like, I only played like 13 minutes in the game. Oh, okay. I had 13 though. So gotcha. like, you, you know what I mean? So it like, yeah, so yeah, like yeah, it kind of, yeah. and that was one of the other places I showed people I shot the ball well. Gotcha. Cause I was playing with all them guys that was just, 
that was, and I was like, I'm gonna just shoot it when they throw it to yeah. me. Like, because I know I'm they like, ain't gonna just pass yeah, it. Yeah, it ain't gonna time. be no yeah. gameplay. So mm -hmm. I made shots in the game. Um, okay. and then the same thing happened in the Jordan game. I went down there. And I was like, nah, I'm not gonna let no. I'm if I get it, it's gone. Yes. Like, I'm not. I, I understand what's going on yeah, now. Like, exactly. we're not gonna do that. But yeah, um, that that okay, that, okay. that's how that goes. Got you. Back to Utah though. So after that third year, mm. I get the offer sheet from Oklahoma. Oh, so yeah, I Oklahoma City. They about yeah. to be Oklahoma City. Mm. So this is when Russ, Jeff Green, KD. <sighs> this is when that young team is getting put together. Yeah. And I'm gonna get to go be the two guard on this yeah. team, but I'm restricted. So they make the offer. I sit for a week and the last hour before Utah's like, we matched it. Not that I was trying to get out. I just thought I was gone because nobody was. They and went. I hadn't been playing and I had yeah. like, I thought I was gone. And I, in my mind, I'm like, I'm about to go be with some dogs. That's my age. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's, about to, it's about to be totally different than what I've been. Yeah. And they match it. But then I, I end up being a starter the next year. And that's when my career really starts. Yeah. Like my fourth year. For sure. What could have been? That was crazy. That was crazy. Could have been. That was crazy. Like, like after it happened, like I was upset for a split second. <laughs> like I'm not gonna lie, because I was like, why did they wait so long? Because the money. Now they can't use that money that's tied up in my offer sheet on nobody else. That's the game that teams play, right? Yeah. Because it's, it's 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 on the books right now. I don't even know why I asked you that damn yeah, question. You know how that go. You know, you know how they be playing them them silly games. God. But wait. yeah. Um, that would I was, it's just because I, I wanted to know what that felt like. Cause yeah. I had been by my I had been isolated basically for three mm -hmm. years. You know, like you've been with the OGs. Yeah. And not that I didn't love all them guys, but it just er, er, we drafted people for three years and I was still the youngest player on the team every year. That's <laughs> crazy, bro. That is crazy. So you get back your fourth year. Mm -hmm. What year in Utah was your bet? Was your you would say? Y'all had the best chance of making. Bro, we had a handful of years. No, we was that's what I'm saying. I'm winning like. Winning a division. We, I mean, I don't know which one is the, because we run it into Kobe every playoff. So like. um to that man. So Were from you four or five, Raja six. Team? I had Raja my last year. I was a Raja in Utah. When they he got came my last year. Yeah, he came my last year when I was with him. Shout out to Raja. I love Raja. I saw a clip of that the other day. He yeah. had, he had, no, I seen it. He was floating around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, Jesus, yeah, don't yeah. poke the bear. But this is the thing, though. At that time, it didn't matter. It, it didn't matter. I learned early that he didn't miss shots because of me. Kobe. Yes. <laughs> it wasn't because of me. <laughs> right? Just, he just had to recalibrate. Yeah, yeah. It's just like Jesus my first messes. real encounter with him drives baseline right. No, the pump fake's coming. So mm -hmm. for one time, I stayed down. He pump fake, pump fake. I stayed down. Mm -hmm. Now he behind the glass with his right. I put my hand, he, I, I, I thought he was gonna call a foul. I actually hit him in the face. He closed his eyes and shot it over the, over the glass. Went in. Wow. And I was like, I never felt bad ever again after that. You can't. You can't. He scared me one time, though. <laughs> Why are you scared? We had another game later. <laughs> and I'm having a good night this night. I'm just having to, I'm, I'm just getting my hand on the ball. Mm. I'm messing with his rhythm a little bit. Yeah. Like, and he's just like, I'm not gonna say he's struggling, but he not, he not being able to get into his groove. Yeah. He got two fouls. So they take him out right before halftime. Me and him standing there half court. He said, all right, I got something for that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I go into the locker room and I'm like. I got to adjust. I'm like, he about to shoot the ball every, 60 times in 24 minutes. Every time. Every time. 24 minutes, right? And everybody like, and, and, and I'm looking at people. And he ain't they calling like, for no they screen. Like, they like, yeah, good shit. I'm like, shh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no. Stop talking. Leave it alone. We'll yeah. talk about this when the game over. Yeah. And even then, we're not going to talk about it too yeah. loud. <laughs> That's a fact. That's a fact. I'm not having it. Yeah. Y'all not the one guarding them. Yeah. I, I know I, I know what's going on. Exactly. <laughs> this is all this is a mental warfare he's trying to have right now. Yeah, yeah. This. But Bean was Bean was that was crazy, man. Man. I got eight and twenty-four. <laughs> Which one's better? Uh couldn't go wrong either. Yeah, one 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 was. Athletically. Super athletic. Yeah, the other yeah. one was athletic, but the other then the other one was just like he had got so masterfully <laughs> bro, skilled bro. that like it the was twenty four stuff scarier. he had never seen. Like nobody was like that, right? Like nobody has like he was doing the player development stuff that we do now already. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like he was already that far ahead. Twenty four was scarier. Yeah, it was scary. Because it was like when he played it, didn't he play like a half left handed? Yeah, because he messed his shoulder up. Like what the f
Mm-hmm. Who does shit like that? Somebody that is determined and more than anybody's ever been. That makes no sense whatsoever. So you got you go seven years in Utah. Mm-hmm. I just want to. I, I want you to talk about being with a organization, a community for that long, and leaving. How, especially when it's the first one. Yeah, I mean, especially when you grew, you basically grow up there. Mm-hmm. Talk about how tough that was, and uh, your trend because you go to Indy. I go to Cleveland for two years. You go I'm, to Cleveland first. I'm in the first. dark ages. <laughs> I'm in the LeBronless years. That's why nobody remembers that. <laughs> nobody remembers that I, I was there. I go straight to Indy. <laughs> Everybody is. Because straight. Indy is where I actually get my name for real now. Yes. Like yeah, now yeah. I kind of like pop. I'm like reinvented. I'm yeah. shooting. I'm a real shooter. PG's, the Indiana team is good when I get yes. like everything changes, yes. right? So It's the you, new era of basketball. So yeah. So just talk about leaving Utah and that. How did that all go about? It just was time. Mm-hmm. Um, like it was time for me to go. Like I, it's just the the ups and downs of the time there, and yeah, just I needed to see something different. And this is not a shot at Utah or like it just was time. Like mm-hmm. I had Gordon Hayward that came in, they was going and they was about to go a new direction. Me and Paul Millsap was the only two left mm-hmm. from like all those good teams. Like it was just time, and I can say this now. So me and Byron Scott, um had a run in, like it, it was, I don't want to make it sound like it was tampering or nothing, but we just had a run in. I just like, he was just like, like he just told me like he admired the way I, I played, like, mm. and that he saw what I was trying to get to, like more opportunity, more, and he stood on business. He hit me in the summer, mm. like when I was free, as soon as I was free, they called. And, Didn't waste no time. Yeah, like, and- And that's all, all you the, want. And all the situations that I had on the table, I wanted to, that was the only summer I thought about nothing but I want playing time. I need to play. Yeah. I need a chance to play in some open space and, and to play understand through, to and play through play, mistakes. Yeah, and understand. And I went there. The only thing that was hard going there was all those guys were me seven years ago. So Kyrie, uh, Tristan, yeah. and they looking at me as a vet now. Mm-hmm. I'm 25. Yeah. Right? Like and you still trying but to. But I was it. seven and I went out and they, nobody knows. I'm still trying to understand. Mm-hmm. I had never been outside of Utah, all these things, right? And I had to figure that out. But the first two months of being out of um, Utah. Utah, if it was like Space Jam, I felt like all my powers is gone. I felt like I, really? I, I, I had lost so, because the system was great, but I had lost so much of me in the system that when I got to go play, I did not, I was like a robot. Yeah. Like that was back, that was when Big Above started, the Bigs doing the dribble handoffs and all that. That's when it was just freedom. And yeah. I had never played that way before. Mm-hmm. So you it just took been time. doing flex. Yeah, I never. I've been doing the flex UCLA cross screens for the bigs. Like we have been playing this because even when Coach Sloan retired, we didn't change the system. It was Coach Corbin. He was assistant coach. He yeah. moved in. He didn't have time to change. The system. Yeah. So that's hard. That, that I mean, people don't understand that as far as like seven years is a long time. Mm-hmm. Seven years is a long time, and you. That's you, a that's a career, bro. That yeah. I'm on year six, and I and I've been on. Well, this three teams, three teams now. I'm like, you get in a system every day of the same thing over and over again. You go to something different, and you're trying to learn a new coach, new teammates. You had the same teammates damn near your whole time Mm -hmm. in Utah, and now you got a young Byrie. Jesus Mm -hmm. Christ, that's that's my guy. That that. you got a young Kai, (laughs) man. You got Tristan, second year year Kai. Yep, second year Kai. Mm -hmm. That's, you knew he was special as soon as you saw him. Like, obviously we saw him the year before yeah. in Utah, but like be, A year under your, belt, getting, under your belt? Getting to the gym with him and seeing him mm-hmm. Every was day. different. And it's not the a biggest thing, he was so fearless, right? Mm-hmm. And we used to talk about, I was like, he don't even know about winning yet. Mm-mm. He don't even know what he, like he hasn't got to a point that's gonna push him even more than what he's being pushed. Cause like, he hasn't got that taste. Mm-hmm. Ain't no blood been in the water yet. He ain't got to the playoffs. He ain't been close to getting nothing. He ain't saying, oh, I could, now, now I know what I need. Yeah. Right now he's just playing. He's just playing basketball. Prime example, we have a, we in, I forget where we are, but he come down, he, Kai, young mm-hmm. Kai. So he goes, yeah. I'm about to get to the lane. He shoot a left hand floater from like 14 feet. Yeah. I said, Kai, what you doing? He said, I'm working on my game. <laughs> <laughs> in the game. <laughs> 
type of statement is that? What was I going to say? Nothing. Nothing. I can't say nothing to him. Because he'll make it the next time, probably. Like, or he'll yeah. do something even crazy that maybe forget that he did that. Like, he just, he was so fearless. Like, he was just tinkering all the time. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. elite, bro. That's elite. I mean, just the fact that that's a, that's a statement that's going to go down in here. That's a I'm, different I'm, freedom, I'm, too. I'm working on That's my a different team. freedom. Yeah. Did they, was that just handed to him? He had I mean, it. when I got there, he had already run rookie of the year and already proved that he needed, he was supposed to have it. The so, keys were his. Yeah, it was his already. And he wasn't slowing down, uh -huh. right? What was that? What, what did they want you to be when you got there? It was literally playing basketball. Like, they was just trying to figure it out. They had got mm. them young guys. Brian had left, true. right? They trying we to get just putting pieces, pieces around. Together. Jared Jack came in during that time, too. Mm -hmm. We was trying to figure out. We drafted Deion Waiters mm -hmm. uh, and, and Andrew Bennett the next year, right? Like, he's just trying to put stuff together. Um, and what it did for me, though, it just let me start learning again. It gave mm. me that, like, that bounce back in my step. Like, yeah. Just being like, oh, this is new. Yeah. Like, it's, it's some freedom. It's some space to figure out, and that's yeah. when I started to see player development. Shout out Jamal Mosley, who's coaching Orlando now. He was mm. there. Bill Handy was there. Mm. Um, Aubrey was there. That's when I started to get back to being like, oh, yeah, nah, this feel yeah, good in my yeah, hands again, sure. right? Like, that's for when sure. that came back. And that's when I that's when I shot the ball extremely well. Mm -hmm. That's when I got up to 38, 39, 40% from the three-point line. Mm -hmm. And that's what literally changed my trajectory in my career. Yeah, Because I started seeing like, all right, I'm with Kyrie. Mm. He's gonna play whatever amount of minutes. What makes me an asset for Kyrie? Yeah, I gotta shoot the ball. Face. Yeah. So I extended my range and I just started working on that. And then when I got it, I made sure I was able to make plays with it still. And then the next year, Mike Brown came. And he was like, you shoot the ball too well, but that not to be the thing that you work on every day. Yeah. Like, so now I'm running off screens full speed. Now I'm adding everything to it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is it. This is what's going on. I want to play. And yeah. then that ego stuff gone now. Yeah. I'm not turning into T Mac, yeah. Kobe. I'm not, that's that's over sure. with. Yeah. So now it's like, all right. Because this year nine at this point. Yeah. You're like, hey, listen. Seven, I'm eight, nine. To play. Now I want to play. I want to stay in the league. I'm 25, 26. Mm -hmm. Like, what are we talking yeah. about? Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Shout out to Price Picks, the presenting partner of Run Your Race. The daily fantasy sports game. Head over to prizepix.com or the app. Prizepix makes it super easy and it takes less than 60 seconds to make your entry. As AJ said, it's very easy. You pick between two to six players. It's a skill based fantasy game. You don't play against anyone. You're playing against the Prizepix projections. It's simple, it's either more or less. Prizepix is the only daily fantasy sports game that has injury insurance. With prize picks, injury insurance, if one of your players get injured, your injury still stays in play. You can make up to 25 times your money this football season. Y'all know me. I rock with my Dallas Cowboys all year. And you already know we locked in on an NFL season. But prize picks also offers college football and many other sports. But prize picks also is matching your first $100 deposit. So if you put in $100, they match $100. But if you put in $20, they match $20. Go to prospects.com slash race and use code race for your first deposit match up to $100. So then you go two years, you're playing with Kyrie, you're playing mm -hmm. with Deion Waves, you see the development in that part. Mm -hmm. Then you're trying to go win. Mm -hmm. you're, a free, you're, you're a free agent yeah. after that two second years. year. Mm -hmm. You're trying to go win. Mm -hmm. What made you pick Indiana? I sat at a table with Larry Bird. That's all it took. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, hey, I, in all honesty, and, they, and at this time, they number one in the East the year before that, right? They, yep. they killing, right? Yeah. Um, and they, like, it was between them, and then Memphis was good at that time. Mm -hmm. I was having conversations with Memphis, but I was on the way to Indiana when Memphis called. <laughs> <laughs> so I got there, and, you know, we had, we sit down, and Larry Bird, like, he was, he, 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 he a G, right? Yeah. Like, he sit down, we at uh, Capitol Grill, the one in Indiana, right, yeah, downtown. Yeah. You know, I got the potato chips on the table. He picked the bowl up. Yeah. He back. He say, look, they gonna talk to you about all them numbers and all that, whatever. He said, look, I look at people, can they play basketball or not? Mm -hmm. He said, I think you can help my team. I want you on the team. And he stopped talking. We had, uh, they did all the bells and whistles. You know, they do like the, they gave yeah, me the little yeah. thing. They gave me this, this super cool like chest with all this stuff in it, with gear in it. Throw me a jersey with my name on it already. Yeah. Then like, I go upstairs. Uh, 
my agent and uh, KP from Pritchard. Yeah. And they stay down there. They talking. He, I saw him write the thing on the paper as I'm leaving. He sit across the table. I get upstairs. My agent called me. Said him. I said, "Bet." Like, it could, I couldn't. I couldn't do no. I couldn't do no better. No. They was four years on the best team in the East. PG, um, turning into what he turned into. David West, Roy Hibbert, George. Hebert, like this team is on the brink of mm-hmm. winning the chip. Yeah. They looking for a six man punch mm-hmm. that can shoot it. I just came off averaging uh, 12, 13 points a game in 20, 18, 19 minutes. That, that, I got the best job in the world right yeah. now. And then PG break his leg. You can't ask. That summer changes everything. Changes everything. And Lance leaves. Why Lance leaves? More money? Yeah, the money. Yeah, that was part of it. That's when he went to Charlotte. Mm-hmm. That was when he got the big front loaded deal and he went to Charlotte. Jesus Christ. And I'm sitting at home on the couch like this, watching that that USA thing. I said, PG just broke his leg. Damn. So you only got how many years with PG? Two. I mean, he came back at the end of that year, but he did. But I, mean, I got two full ones. Full, two full two years. Two full years. And we had decent years. We had good years. Like, what was... I'm trying to put these years together. I'm trying to put these <laughs> yeah, years together. a lot of them. <laughs> I'm trying to put these years together. So, like... Was Roy still there with y'all? Did sit- mm-hmm. And y'all played against, uh, y'all lost to uh, Miami? No, that no, was the year before. That me. was the year before I you. came after that, yeah. Because the year I came was when Brown went back to Cleveland. And that was the other thing too, right? That was the other thing that slowed down my talks to going back to Cleveland because they was trying to figure that out. Got you. So I signed with Indy and Kai called me. He was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, because I signed on the first day of free agency. Yeah. He was like, I was like, bro, I, they they told me they didn't know, and I wasn't gonna tell nobody else no, because I'm waiting on Cleveland. Yeah. And yeah. I would have fit that team once they figured it out because yeah. I was a floor space and I was another For like sure. I'm 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 literally what Brian is filling his teams with at that time. 100 percent Just more athletic because I'm younger than those guys. Yeah, exactly. So, but it just it, ain't, it is what it is. <laughs> so they would have brought you back. With Braun. If they didn't know if they'd have known what was going on. Remember, nobody knew. Nobody knew. Nobody knew what, that he was coming back. Only person knew was Braun. Yeah. That's what's right. Yeah. Man held all the chips. Man held all the chips. Mm-hmm. So you get to Indiana, you played three years there. Mm-hmm. Would you were those would you say that was your your best year was the second year in Cleveland? Or would you say Indiana? Uh uh-uh. I think my time in Indiana is is my best years like Stretch put together just mm-hmm. because we won, and then that that first year in Indiana because Pete broke his leg, you I got, got to it. show a lot of people a what lot of stuff that they didn't know that I could do. I started off the year slow because we was trying to figure it out, and then from like December on, yeah, like I go I go nuts. Mm-hmm. I, I end up averaging on the year like probably like fourteen or something like that. But mm-hmm. like the way I, if you go look at it, the way I played after that slow start, having a couple injuries, yeah. like I showed a lot of people. And then this is what goes into me talking about different coaches and different styles and stuff, mm. right? So then the league changes literally after that year. So I go from being from being a two, three on that team, spending a summer to get ready to be the starting two with PG to playing the four. And the whole league has not went small yet. So like that year, I guard Dirk, KG, Derek Favors, Louis Scola, Zach Randolph, like the whole year. I literally threw my whole game that I had. Who's just, the coach at this point? Vogue was the coach. The second year. This is the second year with Vogue. Gotcha. So I literally, everything that I had just built back up, I had to throw it away. What was the reason? Wanted to go small. Remember, that's why Indiana lost. Atlanta went small. That was the start. That's when oh, everybody was okay. like, ah, okay. I know what to do. Yeah. Because Roe was guarding that rim. Yeah. The verticality was getting big. Yeah. And everybody was like, you know what? We're going to get what Roy out do with the that. Paint. If he ain't in the paint, can't play him. So then that second year, after that, Roy played that whole first in that second year, and they was like, we, gonna, we, we, need, to, we need to have this in the bag. Mm-hmm. So I go, they signed Monte Ellis. Mm-hmm. So now Monte did too, and I end up, end up being a fool. And I remember coming home, telling my wife, my sternum hurt. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's the crazy part, bro. I mean, that's the beauty of it. You could be able to adjust. That yeah, bit, I mean, that, I took that, pride in that. But I also feel like it got to a point. Sometimes it's like, ask CJ, he'll do it. 
That's the bullshit. And guess what? CJ, you did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's like, hey, listen, I'm going to get it done. Yeah, exactly. I'm going I'm to I'm figure, figure it out. I tell my daughters that. That's what we thing. We're going to figure it out. I like it. That's what we're going to name the podcast. <laughs> we're going to figure this shit out. <laughs> At the end of the day, that's all we're going to do. We're going to figure this that's shit out. That's all you out. can do. That's all you can do. And that's the, th- that's the beauty of it, bro. Like, I remember we got a couple young guys on our team now. And I tell them, like, bro, like, as much as you can be, as much as you can adapt to a lot of situations, the longer, longer you play. the longer you're gonna play, bro. Bro, last year I guarded Rudy Gobert. He got me on the court, though. I just want to play, bro. That's and the all. more you get on the court, guess what? The more I can get. Hey, boy, <laughs> come on, bro. I'm like, listen, you it can ain't play. Ain't all me. about that, but it is. No, for sure. I'm like, like I can play one through five. If you need me to, I I don't want to yeah. play the five. Yeah, exactly. But and I told him, I said, when they asked me, I said, I might not know how to do it today. I know in a week or so. For sure. You know what I'm saying? You give me a few games, I figure yeah, it out. Yeah, I'm going to figure this shit out. I'm going to figure this shit out. Let's talk about as far as like Indiana in the playoffs, though. Mm-hmm. That's a, that, that's a, from what I've heard, it's a different animal. Mm-hmm. It's a different animal. I, I heard the crowd is crazy. Mm-hmm. We got a good crowd. I mean, I was blessed with that. I had really good crowds my whole career. Jesus. Utah was like that. Utah's. Too. In the playoffs, you couldn't hear. Utah is nuts. You can hear. And, and, the, and the arena's built like on top of them. Yeah, yeah. I say, I say Utah, I would say Utah's top three. Yeah. I would say Utah's top three. There's none, none with You that. know one that was underrated? Uh, Houston when Yao and T-Mac was there. Really? Because we played them in the playoffs. Really? Yeah, I played against Yao and T-Mac. <laughs> Damn. Uh, <laughs> bro, my rookie year, Greg Osetag was on my team. Ow. That's OC. We get we going in the archives, huh? <laughs> we going in in archives. Yeah. Uh huh. Mimi was crazy because Mimi. I tell you, sir. First time I met Mimi, I had never seen that before. You were with Mimi, okay? Yeah, he's my. That's big fella. We call him Fifty. <laughs> that's so, I should have known money, that you told me you played with man. Karolinko. Yeah, called him Money Man. We called him Fifty. That's my guy. He one of the best dudes I ever played with. Really? But I had never seen nothing like that, right? Because at this time, there's no bigs that. Sh- he was one of the first ones that was stretching the floor like that. Yeah. So I remember getting to the practice facility and hearing, coo, coo, shooting coo. it. It sounded like somebody shoot from far, right? Yeah. Like, cause the way it sounded, yeah. I open it up and I see him, he still had his blonde hair. Yeah. And he doing this drill where he just running in the end shooting threes. Yeah. And I had never seen nobody that big do that. Mm-hmm. Like fluid, with fluid, fluidity, Flu- yeah. that's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. And I'm just sitting there like, this what I'm. This this what I got to deal with, yeah, right? Like, like what, hell, what type of shit? Oh, um, but like memo was so nice. Um, you play you play with booze too, right? Mm-hmm. That's my guy. The midi the whole time, bro. Booze, boy. Booze shot the like. I, I think we didn't really we didn't consider him a shooter because of like the way it happened, but he shot the leather off the, the ball. The leather off the ball. That was automatic, bro. If he caught it fifteen feet, it, it was, was in. And he didn't dunk you with his left. I saw him knock uh, somebody's teeth out. Um, <laughs> Landry knocked his front tooth out in the game. Dunking on him. Dunking on him. With the left, form um, this way, ka, knocked him. Who he the was best, strong as an ox. Who the best player you play with? Mm. That's tough. Because, I mean, obviously I got to say Kyrie right yeah. now because of where we at right yeah, now. Yeah. But uh, Darren Williams in Utah is the best one going in the world for a real good stretch. <laughs> it's, him and C, it's him and CP3 back and forth. and. They would play each other, and he would get his day. He would get more days on CP because he had the size. Couldn't nobody do nothing with D. Will when we when he was healthy in Utah. Yeah. When he was in there. Um, Y'all had you still got that uh, that uh, Carolina blue ne- uh, Utah jersey. Mm-hmm. That's one of the shit, coldest ones. Them shits was coldest sweet, ones. boy. Coldest ones. Damn, yeah. them shits was sweet. Yeah. Now, when you first got there, them shits was ass. It was still old. Them shits was ass. <laughs> but, and then on top of that, we couldn't even wear black shoes on the road. We had to fight for that. What? They were so old school, but they was not doing that. Bro, them jerseys, when you first got there, were yeah, ass. Yeah, they still, yeah. Because I was like, why we don't got the mountain one no more and all the like the. Like, the purple, yeah. Yeah, why we go away from that? I didn't understand that. And then we got the green ones. The green ones was tough too. Green was soft. We got solid. the green ones. They were solid. They but solid. the blue, light blue ones was. We the got those. Because that's when the alternates started coming back yes. and all that. And we was yes. like, ugh. Them shits was cold yeah. as hell. So let's go ahead and get to, after Indiana, you go to, um, was it, it was Memphis. No, no, no Toronto. Memphis, oh, Memphis. Toronto, yeah. It's Memphis after, yeah. Talk about Toronto, man. 
We got a Toronto. Amazing. We got a, yeah. We Halifax. talked about it. We talked about it. Yeah, yeah. We got nah, a Halifax back here. Shit. <laughs> Talk um, about the city of Toronto and the the love beautiful. Toronto has for basketball. Beautiful. Man. That's the best way I can put it. It's beautiful, man. Like yeah. you got a whole country behind you. Yeah. And I I ain't never felt you don't feel nothing like that. Like, mm. and it's great fan bases in the league, but they just not a country. It's not a whole country. It's not a country, yeah. right? Like Indiana was amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, and I they still show love to me there. Like, but it's not a country. Mm -hmm. And you and I walk into like they best years. Yeah. I walk into the coaches set and them already having a real good rapport, right? Mm -hmm. I walk into DeMar and Kyle being this close to winning this thing. Yeah. And they the city just they embrace me right like my daughter is is famous up there yeah cuz she was born there uh -huh. um so like they 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 show love like i remember the first day i got there before i ever even put a jersey on we was going to do something you know you running around the first days you there doing physical doing all that yeah, yeah. And i remember just getting out the car and getting ran up on like as soon as i hopped in the car somebody was like cj yep <laughs> like and it was crazy i was like bro i just got here it like might have been yeah i ain't <laughs> Um, but it was, it was and the city though, and 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 all the city itself is just. It was one of my favorite cities already before I got there. For like, sure, the city is just beautiful. Like it's a great place to just visit and be. Mm. People nice, great place to eat. It's clean. Like what was what was that Demar? Talk about how special that Demar Kyle relationship was. Not just for them, of course it was special for them, but for the team to see your two best players how tight knit mm -hmm. they were and what they would do for each other as far mm -hmm. as on the court and off the court. What they how did for it everybody. trickled down to everyone. What they did for everybody, they was selfless. Like yeah. they were some of the most selfless, like superstars, yeah. I guess. I don't have to use the quote, but like, mm -hmm. you know, people like to say that yeah. them guys is not usually, mm -hmm. they was with it. They was mm -hmm. with everybody. Everything was, Kyle was for his guy. Mm -hmm. if Kyle thought we should have a day off, we got a day off. Like That's he tough. would go through hell to make sure that mm -hmm. happened. And Debo, was the most quiet superstar I ever been around. Yeah, like he, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do my routine. I'm gonna do my, yeah. you know what I mean, I'm gonna get it done. We gonna do, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm not fussing over all oh, none of that. We not like what you, what we need to do. Okay, like, gotcha. you know what I mean? Like it was, cause they cared about winning. They cared yeah. about the game. They cared about, and they knew they needed the team to do it. Mm -hmm. And they cheered for everybody the same. That's how we got that great bench unit that first year. Yeah, like they, them young guys, they was already. People give me credit for some of that, but they was grooming them guys before I got there. Yeah. I just happened to be the guy that was playing with them. Yeah. Like before I got there, they was with them. Yeah. Um, I just was like, uh, I got to be in the unit. Exactly. I got to be the anchor. So like yeah. they had a guy with them all the time. Mm -hmm. But like that, they was just, they were amazing. That's the only way I can put it. They was great. For and sure. Like they play hard. You know, everybody know how hard Kyle play. Kyle. Like, it, I mean, and Debo. There's nothing off limits. Yeah. It's not off limits. I mean, the, he's just doing whatever it takes whatever to, I win, can do the to game. win the game. I'm gonna do when it. I saw the man, damn, try to go over under uh, George Hill legs, I said, oh, he don't give a damn. Yeah. He tried to win we it win whatever calls. Pitbull. Pitbull. I'm, I'm, I'm with it. If I got to get 20 rebounds, I'm going to get 20 rebounds. If I got to make nine threes, I'm going to make nine threes. If I got to take six charges, I'm going to take six charges. If I got to be the brotherly guy at the rim, I'm going to be that. What is the. We got to address it. What the hell? Was it a mental thing with Bron? Or was it just, he was just. I think it became that a little bit. But at the same time, I don't want to take nothing away from, from, from Bron, right? Like, yeah. I don't want to. But I, I will say this. I know that first year when they came, remember that year where he, they didn't, I don't think they thought they was gonna do what they did in that playoffs, right? People was getting hurt. When they had the, yeah, the yeah. year they played us. The yeah. And I remember they came into Toronto cause we was the best team in the league best that year. Best team in the league. Like we had that bench unit rocking, best Kyle team. and Debo, we was the best team. They came best into that the and it, it wasn't the same and feeling. And y'all weren't just beating, y'all were taking care of business. Bro, cause remember, our, our that second unit was winning games. Like mm -hmm. the start, we had the starters so rested. Yeah, we would come in in the mid third quarter and they wouldn't have to play no more. Yeah, we would be down six and win by twenty. Yeah, so like we had such a good, just we was in such a good place. So we started that playoffs and we started that game well. Them first game and then when they got one at home, they they hold the meter change. They say, oh, maybe we can. Yes, and it changed. <laughs> And they, they, the whole team changed. Yeah. Like even the way Brian was, not that he wasn't approaching it right, but he changed. Yeah. 
And he was like, oh, like, we can get, oh, if we can get him in dude. here. Yeah, yeah, Oh, we can do this. And I think yeah. us not getting the one and not, not doing what we sort of did mess with us. In Cleveland? In Toronto. They got one in Toronto. Yeah. With, was it, game? it wasn't game one. I don't remember which one it was. It's, it's blurry. It's one of them. It's though. blurry. <laughs> it's blurry. It's blurry. Because it, cause it hurt. Oh, yeah. Like, because, like, we, we had everything. We was capable, For sure. right? Like, we, we was capable that year. And obviously, they go on to win it the next year. They, everything's happening. But, yeah. like, but, like, we was capable that year. And that's what make the next year, some of the guys, like, it's like, man, we, like, we right there. Been right there. Mm -hmm. Multiple times. Multiple times. And my and my whole career was like that, right? I ran. I had Kobe and Brown to deal with for sixteen years. Hey, listen, <laughs> hey, I'm gonna be honest with you. You shouldn't. Oh. You shouldn't feel bad. Oh, I don't. Because I don't. You ran into the arguably. And then in the beginning, it was the Spurs. So we got to the Western Conference Finals <laughs> when I was 2005, 2006, and we lost to the Spurs. Damn. I mean, you ran into some legends. Yeah. Rightfully so. So now all I can that's talk about who, is that's why they who are who they are. Yeah, and I all I can talk about is I had my nights. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I didn't go out like no punk. That's all I can talk about, right? You can look up some days, you facts. can see my name, yeah, you see yeah. some I numbers. Was, I like, was right there. I was there. I was right. I, I wasn't on the bench. I was in the fight. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's it, you look you look back and appreciate just being a part of those battles. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like as a competitor, mm -hmm. and that's something that I'm just I'm just chomping at the bit for it, bro. Like, I played at the highest level at every, I just want to be a part of a real playoff series. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's something you that gonna, I'm dreaming. I'm it's going to change your life. Oh my gosh, bro. Like, I've, like, I was with the Mavs two years ago and we made that run to the West Conference Finals and I wasn't even playing, but I felt like the, the, I like the back and forth of, Having to figure, all right, what we got to do this game? Mm -hmm. What we got to do? And every game is so different. Every game is a series. Every game. <laughs> and I can't even imagine going against Kobe and Braun, where they so masterful mm -hmm. in what they do. It's. That's the one thing that I, I thought that was the biggest thing that with Braun, like coming up and watching it, like he was always like. Step ahead. Ahead, and he was always looking to be. Mm -hmm. Like even in the game, if he already thought he was, and we and we did something he wasn't ready, he was like, okay, all right, I got it. Yeah. I come out, the, he come out the timeout, oh, okay, we gonna do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. That's done for. Mm -hmm. Like, or I'm a, like, what Trump talking about, he called it out during the game. Like he gonna do this, he gonna do that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do this. And whatever I do, he know whatever I do is gonna trigger everything. Yeah. So as long as he, and then Kobe was just like, you ain't nothing you can yeah, do with me. Yeah, I'm just gonna beat I'm you. I'm just gonna beat I'm you. I'm going to beat you. Like, I'm gonna will yes. through this. <laughs> like, I mentally defeated you before you got here. I Jedi mind tricked you. Like, I was in your dreams last night. That's so different, bro. I mean, just being on the floor with those guys is a blessing in, yeah. in itself. Because at, at the end of the day, that's all I wanted, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't grow up, me, I didn't grow up wanting to be like, this stature of a, I grew up wanting to play basketball. Yeah. Like not saying I didn't want to be the best I could be. I always wanted to be the best person, but I, my thing was I wanted to play the best basketball I could play in the best places against the best people mm -hmm. in the best stadiums. And I wanted that. The other stuff was going to come from me wanting that. Mm -hmm. I didn't think about as a kid growing up, I'm going to be the best basketball player in the world. Yeah. And I'm going to dominate this and I'm going to have the deals and I'm going to have to, none of that stuff was even on my mind. Yeah. It was just, I like to play basketball. It makes me better as a person. Yeah. So I'm gonna do that, mm -hmm. and it just took me. And that's what that's what I, uh, I think about all the time. It's like, yeah, this game has taken us to somewhere places we never thought we would ever go, and we have met some most amazing, genuine, good people mm -hmm. that we would never have met just doing whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like we have connections, just even. The, us knowing each other, mm -hmm. knowing home, like just it, it it's taking us that that's the part that people don't understand. Yeah. Like, yeah, you love this game, you focus on this game mm -hmm. and you lock into your craft, but don't don't miss it. Don't miss the opportunities of meeting all these different people because that ball gonna stop bouncing. Mm -hmm. uh, so 
one last story I'll tell you about that. This type, that's very thing. Mm. My so at the end of my career, like after Toronto, I get traded to Memphis. Mm. I get there. I'm in the best shape of my life at this point, right? But I got I end up getting a screw put in my foot. Mm. I have a stress reaction. This man? No, across it's my uh, I forget the name. It's navacular. Oh shit. So it's a bone that don't get a lot of blood flow already. Yeah. So if we don't put that screw in, then my foot breaks. Mm. And I don't. I'm obviously, it changes the way you with life too, and I definitely don't play. Yeah. So you get the screw put in. Um, when I get traded to DC, I do my physical, and that's when they tell me that. Mm -hmm. So I go through that year where I go through rehab, get back, play ten games, fall tear a ligament in my wrist. Mm -hmm. Done for. Season's done. Yeah. So, like I, I won't get back in time. So they tell me that you can do your rehab here, or you can go home, and we'll you know. The check's still coming in the mail. Like, we gotta, because we gotta waive you because we gotta make a roster spot because we got too many injuries. Yeah. I'm about to have my second kid. So I'm like, I'm going home. Mm -hmm. Pandemic happens that January. <laughs> Everybody start falling like flies right before that. I, I just miss it, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm at home and all I can think about is I wanna be back in the league because I'm supposed to be in the league. Mm -hmm. And all I wanna do is play basketball and be with my family. Mm -hmm. I spent the year in the gym with T. Playing basketball with my family in the gym, not having to go nowhere doing, and I almost missed it because all I could think about was I want to be in the league. People don't see me in the league no more, and everybody keep asking me about it. Oh uh, yeah, I almost missed that time. Mm -hmm. It I, I I missed probably three four months of it before I looked around. I was like, bro, what you stressing over? Mm -hmm. If it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. Yeah. The second I let go, the G League called. I go to the G League, play the shittiest game I ever played in my life. Brad Stevens called the next day, and I get flown to PJ to Boston. Just like that. It happened that fast. And all I wanted was that I didn't want to leave on an injury. I just wanted to get back on that floor. You want to go like, out on your own. I, I, tell you, I told her, I said, God, I'm good. I just want to get back in that jerk. I just don't want to leave like this. Mm -hmm. That's, that was I, all honesty. I got that night. I get, I get back there. I play the one game. The next day I get COVID. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Appreciate you, Lord. Hey, hey that's, get no, me through COVID. Man, I'm fine. Man, I said, hey, that was the deal. <laughs> we, we, we made the deal. And you didn't have to, because like, I can only look at it that way because I didn't play good enough to get called by Brad Stevens. Yeah. He called me because of who I was, mm -hmm. not because of that. Mm -hmm. And they flew me on a PJ because I had to get there. And you, I got you, red carpet treatment for going two for 12 and, <laughs> and playing terrible. Oh my God. So I was like, you know what? You got it. That's a little I went home. Finished my little run with the G League because I had signed a deal with him. I finished the year I with him. I was around the young boys, did the mm -hmm. whole thing, and I was like, I'm good. That's tough, bro. That's big time. That's big time. And listen, that is that is a uh, that's a journey that no one can really write. You know what I'm saying? Like that's oh. just something that you just got to go through. Yeah. And you you you've handled it with grace. You handle it. The best way you possibly can. You played against the best players ever to play we this got, game. We gonna talk some more. We got. I got a lot of. I got more than that for you. But we. Uh, oh, that's something already, we got. <laughs> hey, listen, I already know. I already know. We, we, we. I think I can be. I can see me and CJ doing something later on in life, and yeah, I could. I could see some <laughs> talk shows and some shit like that. Hey, I'm around. Man. We 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 could get that done for sure. But see, uh, it's been big time, bro. I appreciate you coming man, on. Love. It, it's it's been great. Um. Your story has been unbelievable. I one of the best pods I think we've had in all, in all honesty. Um, got a couple questions for you. What is America's team in basketball? Ooh, now Lakers. Why is it now? What, what the now? I just mean right now. If I had to, if I, I'm just going off what I know. Right, it's Lakers. Mm -hmm. This is what it is. Right, I they agree. got the most. They like Cowboys fans. They they don't. We win it every year, and they go every year. They yeah. go they everywhere. Yeah, and they everywhere. Yeah. So that's that's. I they, agree with they, that. they definitely did right now. I agree with that. Second question: Luca or Shea? Deeper bag. That's a crazy. <laughs> that's a crazy question. Um, I think Shea's up. I'm I, right now. I think I'm rolling with Shay too, cause and I only say this also because I see Shay like n not trying to disrespect Luca, but Luca is who Luca is. Yeah, he's just that good. You think like you, it's not? You're saying Shay can add a little bit more. I think Shay got room. Mm -hmm. 
And that's mostly because of the athleticism, point. right? Like yeah. he got room. Not that Luca's unathletic, but Luca's got it figured out. Like yeah, he, just, yeah. he just is who he is. He'll get better that's numbers. That's a great point. That's you know a mean? great like, point. He he do have it figured out. Because now Shea in the post. He wasn't in the post before. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like it's so much stuff that it, yeah. Yeah. Might be right about that. Might be right about that. Last question. This has been very controversial. Does Kawhi Leonard deserve a statue with the Toronto Raptors? <laughs> and this is a good one because you played in Toronto through those years with- I was with him in the beginning of the year. Yeah. Oh, you were? Right. You got the ring. I, no. You didn't get a ring? No. Why? I think I got the mic on the way. Oh, okay. I did not get a ring. So, so one, I'll say this. I don't. I don't want the ring that way. Yeah, I, that's just that's just the competitiveness in me. Yeah, like, yeah, for sure. obviously they wanted to give it to me. I wouldn't say no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, I don't want it because to me, you would have an asterisk on it. Asterisk True. on yeah, it yeah. because I didn't finish the year. I didn't. I was there, yes, but I was part of the Marcus All trade. That's how I got to Memphis. Got you. Got you. Um, okay. But and the other thing is, the team doesn't have to do that. Teams just do that. That's not a rule. People thought that was a rule. Oh, Teams okay. just do that for players because they was there. It's not a rule. If you play this many games, we give you one. Gotcha. That was just teams being nice, gotcha. right? Gotcha. Um, so to answer the question, <laughs> I, I, it's hard to say. It's hard to say yes, but I can see why you can argue it, right? It's hard to say yes, but then it's the first you. one, yeah. And he and he makes the shot that gets him there and against Philly, the whole. But like getting a statue, it's a lot of groundwork that go into getting a statue. Yeah. Like, like he kind of got handed stuff that was already there to mm. not disrespecting what he did. I understand that. Um, but if you go look, and if you go look at the other statues, them is all guys that that went through the hard times in that place to get there. For sure, he didn't have to do that, right? Like, who yeah. got? To, who, let's look at all the statues. Who got statues? Larry, Kobe, Shaq, Mike. Think about what they dealt with. Dirk. What they they exactly they carried, they carried that arena <laughs> to the certain spot to do that. Yeah. And they 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 took the blame that, that came with them not getting there when they thought they should have. And for sure. You know what I mean? Like, do the Toronto Raptors win a championship without Kawhi Leonard? No, no, no. Yeah, so but he was there. Yeah. No, he was. I get it. He was. It took he a was long there. time for that to happen, too. Though it took a it took a long time. So, I I think it's possible. I do think they can, but I I, I that's a, that one's tough because he literally wins it as soon I, as he gets there. Like as soon as he gets there, <laughs> he gets. But that's the but we chip. and you both know there's so much that goes into that, and that's so hard to do. It's so hard to do, but that's also like the lay of the land. Falls into people's lap sure. sometimes, like For right, sure. like For injuries sure. that happen to other people, yeah. injuries that don't happen to you, like it's all and it's all part of the game. It's mm -hmm. not his fault. Yeah, but it's hard to say that them guys couldn't have figured out with another piece or two or something. It's hard to say that the team that's there don't figure it out. Yeah, like, hey, listen, bro, I'm a huge Kawhi Leonard fan. I am too. I'm a huge Kawhi I am, so after, especially after so being with him. So it's kind of him. biased for me. After being with him, I, I, yeah. I, I, I'm I am too. I'm a huge Kawhi Leonard fan. Like so that, that might be why I'm a little biased. I, I, he different. He's different. And then, I, and then the same thing with PG. Like I think, I, don't, I think PG gets disrespected too much. Way too much. PG is one of the best basketball players ever been oh, in this league. And I, I'm, glad this, I'm glad you said that. I've been meaning to say this. This Russell Westbrook disrespect Talk about it. It's <laughs> absolutely ridiculous, bro. Like, people, this man is a all-time great. Not even like borderline all-time. It's like, not even a debate. Yeah, like it's not. He's it's Hall not of even Fame. A debate. Easily. First ballot. Like, what? what is it? How many years you got to be out the league to go? I don't know. Play? I don't care. Yeah. It, I'll put him in as soon as he leaves. As soon as he leaves. I'm like, this is it, ridiculous. He done things nobody ever did. And he puts his heart on the line every, every night. single game. You will never, ever say, rest didn't play hard tonight. So uh, we had a conversation about this once before. And one of my things, this is the problem with social media. And so 
the blow up of our game is amazing. Mm -hmm. But the other part of the blow up of our game, we have the most fans that have no idea what they're talking about. That's a fact. Just because of the blow up, right? That's a fact. Like, because the game is such a likable sport and it's mm -hmm. such, and it's, you can connect the players, you can see us, ain't no helmets, ain't no, you can come sit right there, you can mm -hmm. fall in your lap, you can touch them. Like, but, the disrespect got to stop. It's you got to do some. You can't talk basketball with everybody. Mm -hmm. No, you can't. You're starting to learn that, right? Mm -hmm. It's a bunch of people that think they know basketball talking basketball. Yeah. And it's bad. Yeah. And I and there's microphones everywhere now. Yeah. Like. What makes horrendous. you. Do you know what you're talking about? So we got, we we had a thing happen on our podcast last year. Fred Van Fleet came on the podcast and we talked about it. So I was like, bro, you, you can't tell me how to play basketball. Yeah. And they was like, that doesn't, you, you don't know everything. It was like, no, I don't know everything, but you can't tell me yes, how to yes, play basketball. Exactly. You in general. You didn't even recognize the play to critique the mistake right. Mm -hmm. You don't even know why I did what I did or, what, or what's been, you don't see what I see. Yeah. You don't see the game. I can talk basketball to you and it'd be rocket science. Mm -hmm. You have no idea. You don't get to talk about it that way. You just look at numbers. Yeah. And that's not always the, the case. Mm -hmm. Right? You're not looking at everything that's going on. You ain't looking at that he had his yeah, first kid. You, have you ain't people. looking at the, the change in coaches. You ain't looking at the change in offensive style. You mm -hmm. ain't looking at he been dealing with an ankle injury and it takes time to get back. In. You don't care about that. You don't see that. You don't see nothing. You don't weigh in that. So mm -hmm. now you panicking for two weeks. And I talk, we talk about this all the time. At the end of the year, if I shoot 40%, nobody remembers that January when I was one for 10. Mm -hmm. But that one for 10 right now, you're going to curse my kid's name over. For sure. And it's when Russell Westbrook's career is over, that see, that year that everybody keeps talking about is not going to be existing. No one even going to care about it. It's not even worth talking about. You know what they're going to talk about when Russ damn near average when he averaged a triple double. When he did one MVP, multiple times. And triple I hope he get a chip. I, I want him to get it. He get a chip. Oh, I'm good. Come on, Call me. race and talk when you, your when shit. You, when you do it, I just want to come see her. I ain't even going to talk. Talk. I sit behind the couch. Talk your <laughs> shit. Speak your peace, my boy. And I'm and I'm not mad at him for talking back to people now. No. Like, bro, you're not going to keep talking to me like I'm just I'm a anybody. grown man. I'm a man first. <laughs> I'm a man and I'm one of the greats. Yes. <laughs> it's not like I'm just a man. Yes. I'm a man and the man. Mm-hmm. For sure. Right? Like... It's, Come on, it, man. It, it's like, ridiculous. It's ridiculous. He got to stop. That man coming off the bench for his team now. He Selfless. Come on, he bro. He giving like, everything up. The top 75 player coming up and say, hey, listen, just for the sake of the team. I'll and I'm playing well, and I said I'll do it. It's not like I, I could have fought this. I was hooping before James got here. I don't know, but all right, cool. Y'all want to do what y'all <laughs> got to do? Right, let's, let's do it because I want to win. The real law, we'll never lose. Mm -hmm. We know that. For sure. They for never sure. lose. But, man. Unbelievable pod. It's been great. Love. And uh, CJ, I can't do nothing but say thank you, bro. It's going to be, this going to be a really good one. All right. I, I can see it now, but you already know what to do. Uh, subscribe on YouTube, follow us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and continue to love. I appreciate all of it. And it's only getting bigger and better. Yes. Come on, man. Y'all see what we doing. Y'all see what we doing. Y'all already know what it is. All right. Peace. Hey, hi, money. Yeah.